In this video, we'll work on Ruth chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. Okay, the adjective new. I don't think we'll need this rule. And to rest. I don't think we'll need this rule. Give new husbands to you so that you could rest. Give new husbands to you so that you can rest. Okay, in a so that clause, like we have here, so that, if this verb is future tense, you see there, target tense and form equals future. If this is future tense, it does sound a little bit better to say can. John, if it's past tense, we definitely say could. John went to the library last week so that he could study. But John will go to the library next week so that he can study. So if this is future tense, it does sound a little bit better to say to say can rather than could. So this was inserted by layer four, row nine. Layer four, row nine, right here. Results enablement. Okay, so let's copy this row. And let's edit, let's edit this new row. We always put the more specific rows lower in the layer. So that we'll make this one future tense. And we use target tense and form. We don't use time. We always use this one. Target tense and form is future. Let's emphasize this so that you can rest. Okay. Generated text is identical. Okay, to kiss. Affectionately, not on the lips romantically. We won't need that rule. Okay, generated text is identical. To weep. We won't need this rule. Generated text is identical. That's the last sentence. Then Na Naomi kissed her daughters-in-law and, and they wept loudly. Then Naomi kissed her daughters-in-law and Naomi and her daughters-in-law wept loudly. Okay, these, these two sentences were combined and this one was set to big pro by that that structural adjustment rule that combines two short, simple sentences. Uh, rule one, structure one. And this would be fine if Naomi were the only subject noun phrase in the second sentence. Naomi kissed her daughter-in-law and Naomi wept loudly. That would be fine. And she wept loudly. But when there's another subject noun phrase here, it's not really appropriate to combine them like this. So let's modify that rule uh, this one here, structure one. This should only apply if these two subject noun phrases aren't in a sequence. So let's specify that this one is not in a sequence, and this one also is not in a sequence. This one, okay, here they are in a sequence. First, last, and they have two different indices, I and J. First, last. Let's make this one also apply only if these aren't in a sequence. Okay. Okay. And she and her daughters-in-law wept loudly. And Naomi and her daughters-in-law wept loudly. Uh, this again, okay, this was converted from a noun to a personal pronoun by rule two, structure one. And again, that would be fine if this were the only subject noun phrase in the sentence. But, but to say, and she and her daughters-in-law but probably that's okay, but but I think this is better. So let's let's change this rule also so that it only applies if it's, if the subject noun phrase isn't in a sequence. So 
That was rule number two, structure one. So let's again specify that these aren't in a sequence. Okay, we'll leave this one alone. Okay, let's save it and go to verse 10. Generated text is identical. This first only has one sentence. Let's save it. And in the next video, we'll work on verse 11.